Hey everybody, Steve Bergen here, and we are going to see a very cool script with just 10 lines to produce a bouncing ball, and I learned this from a student at Kincaid School, a sixth grader, and so I'm dedicating this little lesson to Tom Lehrer, who once said that it is depressing for him to think that when Mozart was his age, he had already been dead for two years. Um, kids are amazing, and whether it's music or computer stuff, they can figure things out. Um, and I never, ever, for the life of me, could have figured this out. You see that ball over there? When I press the right arrow in the ball, it moves to the right. That I could have figured out, and that script on the bottom is straightforward. If key right arrow is pressed, change X by 5. So the X coordinate is just being changed by 5. And then the companion, these two lines, if the left arrow is pressed, it changes it to be minus 5. Okay, I could have figured those two out, and that's moving the ball right or left. But here's what someone clever figured out in terms of up and down. If the up arrow is pressed, we're going to set a variable jump to be 17. It seems arbitrary, just stay tuned. We change y by 10. So we don't know yet what that jump is all about, but when we press the up arrow, y goes up by 10. So the height going up and down increases by 10. And then it repeats in a loop until it touches black. And it won't touch black until it comes to the ground. So it changes jump by minus 1, so jump becomes 16, and then it changes y by 16, and it does it over and over again, changing y by 15, by 14, by 13, by 12. So it's changing the value of the height, increasing y, but it's going down, so it's going 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, and then it's going to negative numbers. So here's what the up arrow does. One, two, three, push. Do you see how it goes up? And it kind of comes down like a bouncing ball. Again, one, two, three, push. And boy, I wish I could be this clever. If I type in 27, that number is too big. And then the ball goes like that. And then comes down. It doesn't quite look like a bouncing ball. If I type in 7. And I press the up arrow. It doesn't do enough. So somewhere in the middle. Like 17. Right. And you take this script. And you make it your own. Um, and you pull it out of your backpack. Whenever you need to. And you think about that. Mozart was writing music at a young age, and there's probably some nine-year-old who wrote this code. Who knows? But it's incredibly clever, right? And I'll be using it and appreciating the powers of, of young people. Um, when I, by the way, go to the right, because it's, you see how whenever I jump, it lands on the black. So when i sort of playing a video game and I jump up, and now when I come a little bit more to the right and I jump, I'm going to land in that hole and it's just going to fall down because changing jump by minus one, remember this is a forever script, so it's going down, down, down until it touches black. Um, no one's asking you to m memorize the script. No one's asking you to um, see if you could figure this out from scratch. Um, I don't think there are too many of us who can, um, but I hope this four-minute video together with this script, which is shared, will help you do some neat things in your project. And it's all about that jump variable, which seems arbitrary, but that's what's doing the animation. All right, Steve Bergen signing off. And Tom Lira was a musician also a mathematician from the 50s and 60s. He's still alive, and he's got that quote on one of his songs about Mozart being, um, having been dead two years ago, two years before he, 
his current age. All right, bye, everybody.